Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Baby Lock. During April and May, Baby Lock retailers across the country are hosting Difference Makers events. When we sew together, there's no end to what we can create or the difference we can make. Join us as we sew brighter days for foster children in our community. Often left with only a plastic bag to tote their belongings, these kids deserve a little sunshine. We'd love your help as we sew drawstring bags using Baby Lock sergers to benefit children in our area. To learn more and to sign up, visit babylock.com slash difference hyphen makers. Hi, welcome to Sewing with Threads, uh, the monthly podcast by the staff of Threads Magazine. I'm your host, Editorial Director, Sarah McFarland, and I'm joined by our Senior Technical Editor, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi. And today we're going to talk with Erica Bunker. Hi, welcome, Erica. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Erica started her fashion sewing blog, Erica Bunker DIY Style, in 2005. It's her passion to pass on sewing skills to people of all experience levels. On her blog, you'll find not only expert level sewing, but also fashion savvy styling tips. Erica is based in Auburn, Alabama. She's a self-taught seamstress, burgeoning designer, public speaker, wardrobe stylist, and consultant whose personal style motto is, why buy it when you can make it? She's currently an ambassador for Genomi America, and she wrote the article Sharpen Your Pencil Skirt for Threads number 191. And we'll have a link to that article in the show notes for this episode. Today, we're going to talk with Erica about the fundamentals of creating a luxurious and stylish home sewn wardrobe. Welcome, Erica. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we ask every new guest a few personal sewing questions, and Carol has those for you. Okay. The first one is, and I think you, it sort of was answered, is um, who taught you to sew? And your, your bio said that you were self-taught, but did you, did you have uh, any particular gurus or mentors that you, that you followed to learn along the way? Um, well, sewing was just something that everyone did in my family, and um, it was just typically handed down. Every household during those times had a sewing machine for either just simple things like mending or um, my mother and my aunts, they would see like dresses in stores and they would come home and they would draft their patterns out of like um, brown paper bags or newspapers and um, just recreate the outfit that they saw. And once I got into middle school, uh, I took home economics in eighth grade and um, I learned the fundamentals more of sewing um, to read like the back of a pattern envelope and to um, learn what the markings and the notches and everything meant and how to put everything together and on a more technical side. Um, Because at home, you know, as a little kid, I would just use like my little Holly Hobby sewing machine and make Barbie clothes out of scrap fabrics. And so I really learned um, more so how to do it. You know, we did like the typical things that they teach kids how to do. We sewed pillows, we made uh, pajama pants, and um, I made like um, an actual short set. I wish I had pictures of it from back then. Um, And we had like a little fashion show and everything. So everyone had the opportunity to model uh, things that they made. And it just kind of carried on through life. And um, once I got married and had kids, um, I started doing like home interiors, you know, making curtains and things like that. Uh, Halloween costumes for the kids, uh, costumes for school plays, um, like when the parents were responsible for supplying the costumes for the kids. And um, I never really got into uh, sewing clothes for myself until I became a stay-at-home mom in 2005. Uh, I was looking... um, for different hobbies. And I kind of ran across people that sewed online. I think I was crocheting and knitting at the time. And I realized that um, a lot of knitters and a lot of crocheters also sewed. And I said, well, I have a sewing machine. I can do this. And so I just kind of ventured out to Joanne and just bought like fabric and um, found a couple of patterns and everything that um, I liked. And I think my first sewing project was actually a knitting bag. And I just put that together. And I said, well, that went together, you know, really cute and really quick. And 
at the time I was knitting sweaters. And so I was, I was thinking, you know, like, why not make a cute little skirt to go with the sweater? And it just kind of grew from there. And I just kind of um, just kept seeing things that other people were doing. And that's how you would be introduced to new patterns back then. And I saw people were posting on uh, patternreview.com and posting reviews, and it just grew from that point. And here we are today. (laughs) (laughs) So, well, that that sounds like a classic story, actually, in a lot of ways for people nowadays. Mm -hmm. So our next question is, what is your favorite sewing term? Um, My favorite sewing term is sewist. Um, I like it because... um, It doesn't have a gender. It's non-binary because I I think a lot of people see when you sew and they like to attach the word seamstress to you. But I know a lot of men that sew. And um, and I love that the term is uh, gender neutral and it can apply to anyone no matter how they identify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what are you currently sewing? Um, currently right now, um, I'm into just luxury fabrics in the moment. I'm having a moment with those (laughs) and I'm making a champagne colored, uh, Lurex suit. Oh my gosh. Well, we will talk more about these things after the five questions are done, I'm sure, because we need to hear more about that. (laughs) So, well, I was going to ask you, what's your favorite fabric to sew? You like Lurex apparently and luxury fabrics. Anything else in particular? Uh, I love stretch wovens. Um, Mm. I think they are a Kirby girl's best friend. Um, They just really um, cling to the body in a very flattering way. And um, you don't have to do a lot in in tales of fitting when you're working with stretch wovens, especially for like fitted dresses and um, pants that are fitted. And it just gives you, um, it gives a great amount of give to the Mm -hmm. fabric and everything. And it just really just is so flattering to the body. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, what do you love most about sewing? Uh, The finished project, (laughs) the finished product, (laughs) (laughs) definitely the finished product. It's like um, going on an amazing shopping trip and you find the most perfect garment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Yes. Yes. And no one else will have it too. I love love having something unique. So, Erica, to anyone who's unfamiliar with your blog, how would you describe your content and your personal style? Um, My personal style has always been, um, I like to call it classic with an edge, um, because I love classic pieces that I can wear um, 10 years from now. But I also like to combine them with trendy pieces and, um, you know, just so that I will look of the moment. But I really love classic pieces. Like, I'm still wearing things that I sewed, like, 10 years ago. Could you give us an idea of how much of your wardrobe is self-sewn? Probably um, 90 plus percent. I haven't gotten into sewing um, lingerie yet. Uh, That's something that's on my list. And I'm also um, learning to make shoes right now. (laughs) So so that's a new venture. And um, I also, I make, uh, I occasionally make some um, workout clothes. Uh, That's fun to work, make too, because you always know that, you know, your workout tights are going to fit and you're not going to have like any slippage or anything. And uh, like when you're working out, you don't have to keep pulling at them and pulling them up every time you bend over. And so that's a great thing to make. Yeah, I agree not- with you. Yeah. I mean, I think that if everybody thinks workout clothes, they've got, you know, a hundred percent stretch that they're going to fit anybody. But I have had that problem where they're just too low in the waist in the back somehow. And you just don't feel like you can <laughs> quite give it your all when you're at the gym. Right. Uh, what's your advice to anyone who wants to start on that journey of having a self-sewn wardrobe? Like, like where do you even begin? Because I think when you're a beginner, sometimes the pattern and fabric choices are just overwhelming. Well, I tell people, um, and I don't know why it is that I, when people walk into a fabric store, uh, they think, oh, what's an easy fabric to sew with? And they go straight to the uh, quilting uh, cottons. And I always tell people, like, you know, you've seen clothes before, you know, think about, like, what your favorite pants or your favorite jacket or your favorite dress is made out of. Just look at the label and you can find that same fabric. 
and just start with that. I mean, like I would advise people probably to start with like um maybe like a good woven with a little bit of stretch in it. Mm-hmm. And um as a cheat, I tell people to use their walking foot because it just works great for all fabrics mm-hmm. and um and just to get started from there. And don't overthink it. Um like go on websites and look at fabric content on things that you like and you can find a pattern because there's nothing new under the sun and you can find a similar fabric. You seem like a very prolific sewer looking at your vlog. How do you, how do you find the time to sew? Um, it's just something that I just have to do. Um, it's the same thing as like, um, you have to eat. So you find time to cook and, um, I find sewing to be therapeutic. Um, it has gotten me through like, you know, really rough points in my life. Like I'm, I'm recently divorced and, you know, like it was something that just kind of, you know, kept my head clear. Like when you feel like your entire life is spinning out of control, you know, it's that one thing that you have like 100% autonomy over that you can control from beginning to end. Now, in your bio, it mentioned that you're a burgeoning designer. So could you tell us about that? Um, well, you know, it's something I have been thinking about for a while. And um, I, I did a collaboration uh, with Style So Me Patterns where I created um, – a pattern. It was something simple. And um, a lot of people in the community really liked it. And I just wanted to see how people would react to one of my designs, you know, like something that came like out of my head. And um, it went over really well. So that's something in the future that I plan to um, keep pushing forward with. Uh, in, In your design philosophy, is there something, is there something that might be missing in current patterns that you want to get across in your designs? Uh, in current patterns, um, I don't see enough classics like um, wardrobe builders. Like um, I'm not seeing like enough classic blazers. Uh, sometimes blazer patterns that the pattern companies release can be a little too trendy. And sometimes you just want like a classic single breasted or a classic double breasted jacket, you know, just classic flat front pants, maybe like tapered, maybe some with like a wide leg and just pieces like that. Um, really nice pencil skirts that you can build like career wardrobe uh, for anything else. And, you know, like um, different separates, Sure, sure. Erica, do you build like mini or capsule wardrobes uh, each um, season? I used to, um, but I, I have like, I do have a lot of clothes now and I can just kind of just maybe like make things and build them into what I already have. So I don't really need to do like uh, collections like that. Okay. I notice you love color. And I do too. And do. how does color build into building a, a classic wardrobe? I, I feel that sometimes people think they need to stick with neutrals for mm-hmm. versatility. What's your philosophy on that? Um, I think that you should just kind of go with what you're drawn to, like whatever catches your eye. Like if you notice that um, when you walk into a store, like what are you gravitating to? And I, I think a lot of people think, oh, well, I like this, but I can't wear it. And this like, yes, you can. You can wear it. <laughs> if you like it, then, you know, build on that. Do you use um, primarily the patterns from the bigger companies or do you work with independent patterns? What, what um, kind of things do you go for? Mostly? Both. Um, both. And I've really um, gotten into the ease of using like PDF patterns and mm-hmm. buying them and just having that immediate gratification of just downloading them and printing them out and taping them together. Um, yeah, it's, it can be kind of daunting sometimes, but um, I feel like, you know, there's enough things to binge watch on TV now and on Netflix and, you know, you just kind of just get into something and just start taping away. <laughs> well, I, just, I like that experience too. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Carol. Oh, I was going to say, when I look at your blog, you have, you have obviously a kind of a talent for fitting and you always look amazing in your clothes. So do you have specific fitting changes that you just apply to every pattern or do you, if it's a new company, do you just kind of make it and make a muslin and then go from there? Um, I am terrible when it comes to making a muslin. I usually take a uh, flat pattern measurements mm-hmm. and um, if the patterns companies are 
accurate with putting the finished sizes on there. Things typically work out well for me. Um, I already know that uh, nine times out of 10, like um, if they tell you that the pattern is designed for like someone that's like five foot six and maybe like a C cup bra or whatever, I know where I need to make measurements, uh, measurement changes. Um, I'm five nine. So automatically I know that I'm going to have to add like an inch at the waist and lengthen everything. <laughs> and um, I typically make a sway back adjustment, a full bust adjustment and a full seat adjustment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you learn about fitting changes? And are there any particular instructors you still follow or you look to for more information? Um, just kind of, I learned them from people around the the web, you know, other sewers in the community. And the hardest thing was fitting pants because there weren't a lot of information out there on pants fitting. And it's just something that you just kind of get into these sewing groups and everything. And you just kind of bounce ideas off of each other. And you just learn what somebody else did to get their pants to fit. Um, Because I've always had the problem with um, pants uh, dipping at the center back. And it just wasn't enough room. And you have to just learn how to do that full seat adjustment. And um, maybe like lengthen the crouch curve and things of that nature. And um, those, I haven't really seen a lot of that in the books. Yeah, we've started covering that a little bit more in the last two or three years. Before that, the pants fitting that we had tended to be, you know, just get the circumference to go around your body. But of Mm -hmm. course, as we all know, that does not help (laughs) with fitting the back curves at all. Right. It just I makes mean, you, you can get in, but you, you're still going to have the dipping back or or lots of flappy fabric underneath your seat, although there can be a different problem depending on your shape. But Yeah, when you're round in the back and then yeah. curved out on the sides and everything, I mean, yeah. like you have smiling crouches, gaping pockets, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it takes a lot though. And, you know, and once you figure that out, it's like, okay, now I can make any pair of pants fit. I was talking to my sister-in-law who's very petite, but has some some uh, nice curves that don't fit into pants the way that they are drafted. And she doesn't understand it. She thinks she just has to get the measurement to match what the pattern says. And I said, look at a dress form and compare your shape to that. You are nothing like a dress form. Nobody is. You are not going to be able to get into that. Not right. without making changes. Yeah. yeah. Erica, I saw in your blog that you said that you were becoming more and more body confident. Right. Could you talk a little bit about that that journey? And do you have advice for any of our listeners about that? I think it's, it's such a personal journey. Um, I think that it's just something that just almost like a switch that just clicked on with me um, once I turned like 40. Um, I started looking at the way I was dressing and I didn't feel like I was who I was supposed to be. I felt like I was who society was telling me I was supposed to be like, oh, well, you're a mom and you're a wife and you're supposed to look a certain way. And that's just not how I was feeling. I don't know if that's a form of imposter syndrome, but I I just didn't feel like I was being authentic with who I am as a person. And um, it's just kind of been redefined the older I get now. And now that I'm 50, it's like, oh, well, I'm wearing my hoop earrings. I'm wearing uh, my back out <laughs> and, um, and I feel like I'm living my truth now. And I think that's just something that you just have to do. And I think a lot of women just resign themselves with, oh, well, I'm a certain age and I can't wear that or I shouldn't wear that. It's like, who told you? <laughs> who told you you can't wear that? Right, right. Yeah. And you also said that um, you believe in occasion appropriate dressing. Not Mm -hmm. age appropriate dressing. Right. Yes. And I saw that um, beautiful project. At the time we're taping this, you had recently finished um, the sequined mesh uh, dress. It was kind of Mm -hmm. like a duster. Did you have any specific occasion in mind for that? Or was it it's kind of inspired by the beautiful fabric? Uh, It was inspired by the fabric. Um, Absolutely not. Like last year um, when COVID hit and the pandemic and everything and everything shut down, um, I think a lot of people were like, okay, well, we don't need clothes anymore. So (laughs) let's just all be in yoga pants and pajamas. And I'm like, wow, you know, I really miss sewing clothes. And um, 
I'm not going to wait for the world to open back up to so beautiful things. I'm just going to sell them. And, you know, whenever, you know, we can get out and, and attend events again, you know, my closet will be ready. But I'm going to, you know, enjoy sewing the way I like to sew. Well, I admire you that you have a lifestyle that it allows you to wear those because even without COVID, I never have any place to wear sequins. Although Sarah has said we're going to do sequins Friday, right? At the office. When yes, we get back to yes. The office. I'm a big advocate of sequin Friday. Yeah. So maybe I mean, we'll it's, it's really not as dressy as you might think, though. <laughs> like, um, I would totally wear that in real life to maybe like a, a concert, you know, throw it on oh, yeah. with like a T-shirt and maybe a pair of leather leggings and boots and just kind of wear it, you know, as a coat. <laughs> Oh, that's very aspirational. I like to hear that. It sounds great. <laughs> Erica, one thing I like to see on your blog is your accessories. You have fantastic accessories. So do you put a lot of thought and time into what you buy as accessories for your sewn garments? Um, I just kind of uh, collect things as I see them and I figure they'll work with something. Um, like, um, the Kenneth uh, Lane belt that's on the dress. I've had that belt for probably almost 20 years, I want to think. And um, I knew it would just, I tried to like work it in with different things. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it looks weird. And, um, <laughs> but it just worked with that dress. I That was what I was thinking when I was making it. I'm going to need something at the waist because um, I didn't add the buttons to the pattern. And I really didn't want to add hooks uh, because I didn't want to risk like um, a hook maybe be like getting caught in the wrong place and like damaging the fabric and I knew I needed something to hold it together and because I just put it on and just kind of wrapped it around myself and just put the belt around it and I was like that big giant butterfly belt will be perfect with that <laughs> dress. oh yeah well so do you do you go to uh, you've been talking about liking to use luxury fabrics do you find a fabric and then figure out like what you think it should be or do you come at it with an idea of you want a specific type of garment and then you find the fabric and the pattern to go with it. Um, sometimes it's a little of both. Like I just happened to see that fabric and it's, um, and the pattern is a Mimi G pattern mm -hmm. and it, it's almost reminiscent of the fabric that she used um, because I, I know she is some type of sheer um, with look like it has some type of embroidery design on yeah. it and I said well this will work perfect for that because it's such a versatile pattern that I, mm -hmm. I saw it as a dress I saw it as a swimsuit cover um mm -hmm. that it could be many things and that one the fabric just kind of spoke to me on that and I thought about what do I have that I could work this in with mm -hmm. because I knew I didn't want like a true like ball gown or anything because i definitely <laughs> didn't have an occasion to wear that <laughs> and um but sometimes though like if I'm you no know, if I'm making like um pants or like a top or whatever then I'll have a fabric in mind and I'll go search for that mm -hmm. and uh, do you have local fabric stores that you can um shop at or do you have some favorite online sources um, unfortunately, I don't have any independent fabric stores. We just have our regular um, big box stores, mm -hmm. uh, the Joanne and the Hobby Lobby. And um, but currently right now, I am working with a, a fabric company, um, Zaloof Fabrics out of New York. Mm -hmm. And they are an online dealer. And so anyone can order and um, they're amazing. Their prices are great. They send like humongous swatches to you that are cut from selvage to selvage at a quarter of a yard. Wow. So it's wonderful. <laughs> Do you have a large fabric stash? I, I'm building a fabric stash now because I'm working with this company. But typically, I never really maintained a fabric stash because um I felt like I never got the measurement right. Either I would uh, want to make something and I would have maybe like a yard and a half, you know, like some obscure amount like that left over, or I never had enough fabric. So I just kind of um, had projects in mind and um, I would maybe like buy in like lump sums. What are the spring and summer trends you foresee for 2021? Um, lots of color, um, just pastel colors, and I, I call them Easter egg colors. That's what I'm seeing a lot of right now um, because, you know, last year it was just so dreary, and I think everybody is looking for these happy colors right now. And what are you sewing next? 
Um, what am I sewing next? Um, I'm probably going to really start uh, digging into like uh, warm weather things like spring dresses and things like that, because I believe it's we're our heat is here to stay right now. So <laughs> I don't think we're going to have winter anymore. Yeah. Uh, we may have some chilly days, but um, yeah, I'm really ready to get into spring sewing. Now, do you um, do you keep all your clothes? Do you eventually do you go through your closets every year and sort of decide I've worn that one enough and I'm not going to keep it anymore? I do. Um, I have um, used consignment stores in the past mm -hmm. and um, I typically uh, donate to like organizations like Goodwill and Salvation mm -hmm. Army and um, places like that. And I've actually seen someone um, in my community <laughs> wearing one of my jackets before. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I've I've actually heard that some consignment stores won't take home sewn clothing. They mm -hmm. if it doesn't have a label, they won't take it, which is crazy. If, of course, if yeah. they're well made, then they're they're better than ready to wear. But right, yeah. Oh, I've definitely seen home sewn clothing at the Goodwill here in Connecticut. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I have seen some of it. I mean, and some of it probably should not have gone as far as the Goodwill. It probably should have ended <laughs> in the rag bag. <laughs> but <laughs> where do you where do you like to look for style inspiration? Um, I love sites like uh, netaporte.com because um, you can do all of the zooming in and they have really good details about um, the sizing, uh, the measurements. Like they'll tell you that a jacket is uh, maybe like uh, 25 inches from the neck to the hem. Mm -hmm. And um, they always give you good fabric content. And um, I also like um, uh, Intermix. <laughs> Uh, online.com. Yeah, Intermix. Um, Farfetch is very good. Far, too. Farfetch, Revolve, yeah. um, places like that. And, you know, and the usual suspects, uh, the Neemans and the Sacks. Jerka, if you were to buy some ready to wear, or you were looking at ready to wear, how do you assess ready to wear versus a pattern you might sew next? Um, I already know that um, if I'm going to buy ready to wear pants, I'm going to need to find something that's going to fit like the widest point of my hips and go in and alter. And uh, it's just things like that. Um, I would go to a store, um, maybe like um, an Ann Taylor, somewhere like that, where I know that I can buy um, pants in, in tall lengths because I like to give yeah. myself that extra room. And, um, and if I need to take a little bit off, which probably I won't have to, <laughs> um, I, I would do that. And um, that's how I would assess it like that. Do you have, um, do you have a feeling at times that you would rather start from scratch and just sew the garment rather than do the alteration? I do. <laughs> yes, definitely. I think there was a point in my sewing where I used to accept shortcuts on patterns. Like I would make something that I knew I wouldn't buy. I would go for the easier pattern. Mm -hmm. And now that I've had more of a sewing education, I feel that I can really achieve the details that I admire on ready to wear as well as the right. Bed, of course. Right. Yeah. Um, I feel though as if I still sometimes have projects that aren't successful. So does that ever happen to you? And what's your philosophy about it? What do you do in that case? Oh, oh definitely. We all do. Uh, sometimes, um, like, you think this fabric will work, and it just doesn't work. And, um, and you have to just tell yourself, you know, like, ah, it's just fabric, and, you know, back to the drawing board. And, you know, and just not be heartbroken over it. Now, I know anybody uh, listening to this, probably our audience uh, has plenty of answers for this. But if someone who wasn't familiar with sewing asked you, why sew your own wardrobe when you could probably buy things for less, what answer would you give them? Well, I, I buy things. Well, I sew things instead of buying them um, because I'm tall and it's always been a struggle to find things that fit. Uh, I remember like um, when I first started working back in the 90s um, and I needed career clothes, pants were never long enough. I would always buy cuff trousers and just let them down because it was so many inches of fabric underneath there. And I learned to do little tricks like that. And jackets were never long enough in the arms. And um, that's why I love jewelry so much. I would stack bangles to take up for that space. Eric, I have the exact same problem. I'm 5'9 and I'm short-waisted. So uh, I have problems with jackets and tops being too long in the body, but too short mm -hmm. in the arm and pants being way too short in the leg. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And that's an excellent reason to sell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Well, Erica, we've actually gotten to the end of our time. Uh, you've really inspired me to get back to my stash <laughs> and sew something beautiful. It's been yes, really fun to definitely talk about you it. should. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have several works in progress. And uh, they are really nice fabrics. And I think sometimes I hesitate cutting into those beautiful fabrics. But, uh, you know, once you've been in my stash for two years, I've got to use them. Definitely. Yeah. Make yourself something beautiful. Just treat yourself. I know. I have all the fabric sitting there that's like brown and dark maroon because I bought it to make clothes a year ago. You know, it's sort of in the winter, actually, before we all went into lockdown and I haven't used it. And now we've come full circle all the way around another whole year and it's getting to be summer. It's going to sit again. I'm sure it's going to sit some lo a bit longer until I get through some maybe more fun spring and summer stuff. Yeah, well, fall yep. will come and then you'll have those yeah. beautiful, rich fabrics for then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Follow Threads on social media and visit threadsmagazine.com to view show notes for this episode. While you're on the site, check out Threads Insider, our online membership with exclusive access to expert sewing techniques. Until next time, keep on sewing with threads.